What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Do you want a 100% success rate with your Tissue Culture Tycon deflaskings? Well, I've got some tips for you that can guarantee that success. Let's check it out. Alright, so to start this off, you are going to need some Tissue Culture Tycons. I got these from Growth Revolution. I, I purchased 10 of them. Um, you can find them on Facebook. They're really helpful. Great customer service. Um, just a great experience all around. All right, so to start off this, you are actually going to need some tissue culture tie constellations, and those will be in vitro. That's what this is about, how to get them out, how to get all the agar off, and be successful. Some people have had some history of rot with these things, so I'm going to show you what I did to get a 100% success rate. I did leave these in the flask for an entire month pretty much out of laziness and busyness. I do not suggest this. A lot of mold started to grow inside the flask, albeit a lot of them were like kind of a nothing burger they didn't really matter but still you don't want to take the time and chance it the website does have instructions on how to do this with like hydrogen peroxide and stuff and they use a lot of different like sanitizing things i did not do this at all i just used plain water i'm not a huge fan of using like a bunch of like fungicides like bactericides and a lot of things like that i just think you're just setting yourself up again for like another sterile environment and waiting for some invader to move in and just like monopolize the place the really big key here though when you are deflasking these things is to get all of the agar off. If you look up what the main ingredients are in agar, sugar is one of them. And that sugar, the mold just loves. So make sure you get everything you can off of the roots. I really wash these extremely vigorously. I'm talking like full blast, coming out like a rocket, water. I mean roots were flying off, which I consider a good thing. Because you will see later on what happened when a little bit of that sugar and agar was left behind. You'll see what grows. It's pretty interesting. So I'm telling you the most important thing is not really sanitizing your stuff because it's already sanitized. It's coming out of a, like a tissue culture thing. But it is getting all the agar off thoroughly. It's so important. If you want to use a fungicide or what other companies recommend like Growth Revolution, there's nothing stopping you. I just I did not do that. Once you've got them deflasked, we need a new place for these. I would highly not suggest just potting these things up and setting them out. They will instantly die. You're going to need to pretty much recreate their environment again, but just slightly less sanitary. So I'm really just making a propagation bin here. I do like sphagnum moss because it does well. I don't really get any molds or anything in there. Sometimes a little algae, but that's it. And so really we need to keep that humidity 100% because you can't just shock these guys. They have grown in a completely sterile 100% humidity environment their whole lives. And if you switch them suddenly to that, there's a high probability they will wilt and die. So once you have your tissue culture little seedlings, they're not really seedlings, I guess they're the little clones once they're ready. Again, I cannot stress this enough, be vigorous. Use a toothbrush, use anything to get that agar off. Again, you will see why, but it's really important step. It's probably the most important step. All the sanitization is probably, in my opinion, it's a lot less important than getting that agar off. If there's no food for stuff to grow on, it's going to be just fine. So once you get them all cleaned up, we are just going to stick them in the sphagnum moss. Make sure all the roots are covered nicely and everything is really good and wet because, again, we need to keep that 100% humidity for a while while they get used to being in a world with bacteria, with funguses, and just with other little mini organisms crawling around and stuff. They got to get used to this non-sterile environment, but we don't want to shock them with a very not humid environment. So make sure we're hitting 100% humidity. I can't stress that enough. Now, like I said, I only did deflask 8 out of the 10. I did take 2 to a lab to see if, like, all tissue cultures had these, like, deep infections of pythium. So I took them to a lab in my local capital, had them tested. Um, the results came back, no pythium at all. There was some random mold in there that, uh, it was interesting. It didn't cause any problems to the plants, but there was, like, a contamination from just the actual packet perforating um, from just shipping and stuff. So nothing to worry about. There is no like scary stuff inside. They're literally just normal. And I think a lot of people are rushing this process. So again, we want to take our time, really remove the agar and get that 100% humidity for a while. Now, about 10 days had passed since my prior thing, and the testing was sort of done at a different time, and I did want to check them out and document them for this whole video, because again, the Pythium Saga was something I was really excited about, and I documented it thoroughly, so I did check on them a little early. You could probably leave them a little longer, but this is important so you can kind of see what's going on. From the top of the sphagnum moss, I can see brand new white roots, which is really important because really all we care about is all the new growth, the new roots. All the old stuff is just not 
like up for par for like growing in normal environments because it's been grown in vitro this entire time. So like I said, we're really looking for that new growth. I did notice some black stuff around some of the base. However, when I looked at the actual nodes in the main growth vine, everything looked fine, good, green, and healthy. So I just kind of let it be to see what happens. Now you'll see next up here when we move a few more days. And by a few more, I mean exactly 10 more days later. And you'll see there's all kinds of new progress going on. From the very surface, again, everything looks great. Nothing's like falling over. Again, the 100% humidity is really important and good light is really important. These are variegated plants, so they're already sort of disabled in a sense where they don't have like total chlorophyll capacity. They have a lot of white patches, so they already can't produce like a normal monstera wood. So good light is important. 100% humidity is important and lots of moisture. I did dig some of these out and here's where we can witness why I really am stressing this whole agar thing. If you look closely, everything looks great. There's a ton of really good new root growth everywhere, even further up the vine, off the main root base. However, you can see this black crust. This is where I believe is a bunch of leftover agar that was sitting there that I didn't get good enough because again, I didn't use a toothbrush or anything. I just really used high water pressure. I didn't scrub it well. I did break some roots off, but here you can see there's a crust with some sort of fungus and mold growing on there. Now, I wasn't too panicked because everything felt good. Nothing really felt mushy, like the roots felt pretty solid, and I did try and pull off anything that felt loose. It is semi-important to sort of like tear off any soft stuff if you can find it but I also don't know if I'd recommend like rooting around like I've done here some I did not pull out and some I did and we'll see what happens in the future but the ones I investigated I did if anything really broke off I got rid of it but again I just potted them all back up after seeing this and I thought eh we'll just give it some more time and see what happens because again I did this to kind of prove some people right or wrong so I wanted to see like how this played out so that brings us to almost a little bit more than a whole month that has passed, probably about a month and 10 days since we first like deflast these and potted them up into the sphagnum moss. And you can see everything is doing fantastic. No one's dead. We have eight out of eight still growing really well. Looking at the roots, you can see that there's white roots everywhere on the surface. You can see them down the sides of the clear container. I mean, everything is fine and it doesn't look like that mold stuff affected it at all. And again, I didn't dig up the other ones and even touch them. So you can see the ones I did touch and the ones I didn't touch are all completely fine. The key here is they've been in a high, like almost 100% humidity container for over a month. Towards the like last, I would say, 10 days of this month and 10 days, I did open up the little crack on the top and slowly start to bring that humidity down a little bit just so when I pot them up, it isn't like a super shock to them. But again, I'm really taking my time with these and that is one of the other huge keys for success. Do not rush this process. If you're going to invest in buying a bunch of these plants, these awesome Thai constellations, don't rush it. You're going to keep this plant for years, so there's no reason to like rush the deflasking process. At this point though, after seeing everything is doing good, I am going to stray from what I'm telling you to do. I would not suggest doing this part here. Again, I was trying to prove someone wrong. Um, they really challenged my challenge, I guess you could say. So I really wanted to set these up for disaster. In my opinion, I would pot these up in more of just like a sphagnum moss perlite mix. Um, some really chunky like non-organic soil type stuff and just keep them in some sort of humidity bin However, I took these and stuck them right in like the most grossest um, Recycled soil that I use which is mostly just peat moss and perlite and then whatever I dump back into the bin and so I really wanted to try and kill these and You'll see the the outcome I guess but again I'm trying to kill them to prove a point and so I potted them all up and I kept them in a bin again the humidity is still pretty important for these young plants because they've had just a non-traditional start. I did put them in a bin with a bunch of dead moldy plants that had perished in the past to increase my chances of killing them just to kind of prove out my opinions here. So really everything is hinging upon giving it some time and that 100% humidity, let new roots form, let new leaves grow before you start doing anything crazy. And again, just to remind you, I am giving these guys good light. Don't put these in a dark place. They're missing half their chlorophyll. They need all the help they can get. The more light, the more energy, the more they can grow and just succeed. 
At this point, an entire two months has passed, and towards the end of that second month, I was cracking the bin, letting it get back to normal humidity, because again, we are slowly acclimating these things. I did not rush this at all. I would say a two-month process from flask to open air is pretty generous, but again, if you want to keep these plants forever, like we all want to, there's no reason rushing this. What do you have to gain from taking your TC Tycons and shoving them in potting soil within like the first two weeks? You have nothing to gain from that. Take your time and I promise you, you'll have success. So you can see at that two month mark, they are looking fantastic. There is some yellowing of the very old leaves. However, I'm not concerned at all. When I look at the base, everything looks fine. I can see new roots growing and things are looking healthy. A lot of that old growth is going to die off over the next month or two just because it's all like grown in vitro in a very different situation compared to open air or just your current household situation. So don't freak out too much if older leaves are turning colors. If the newest stuff is, then you can panic. All right, at this point, these plants you are looking at are four to five months from removal from the tissue culture process. So again, they are all healthy plants. This is 100% success rate. I have been having these in open air under good grow lights. They're getting great light. They've suffered droughts. They've been wet for a week. They really are resilient plants. So I think the key is a lot of good light because they're missing a lot of chlorophyll and you'll have good success. Just to sort of wrap everything up, I do want to say make sure you get all that agar off. Make sure you keep high humidity, good light for at least the first month, if not two months, and then put it into a pretty decent like cleaner soil and just slowly bring it up to your typical humidity and you should do just fine. Please do not rush these plants. I know it's so enticing to get them out of their little propagation bins and get them out in the open, but you run the risk of taking a weakened plant that's been growing in vitro and just hammering it with like conditions it is just not prepared for and you will not have success. So please take your time. This is an investment into your future, into years from now, into a gigantic plant. So don't rush it. The two weeks that you might save getting it out early and taking it out in fresh air might cost it its life. All right, guys, that pretty much sums up this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and those tips will help you out when you're deflasking your first tissue culture tie cons. I promise you, if you're patient and you provide them with good environments, they will do just fine, and you don't have to worry about root rot later. I have been over and underwatering these things now that they're established, and they do just fine. You can see they're like pretty much abused in this thing. I set them in the dark corners, the light corners, pretty much anywhere. As long as you get them established well, you are good to go. So I hope these tips help. I really hope that you guys have great success with your plants. As always, may your plants go strong and healthy, and I'll see you next time.